Springfield attorney who police say kidnapped a little girl is back in jail tonight. Find out why straight ahead in a live report. A corporation dedicated to rebuilding Springfield's east side turns over two homes to new owners tonight. It seems like a lot more students are dropping out of school these days. Tonight we'll talk to one school district about its efforts to keep kids in the classroom. A year ago, Tri-City voters approved a $1.8 million referendum for school improvement. Today, we'll see what that money bought. You're watching coverage you can count on. WICS News Channel 20 at 6. Tonight's top story. Police say he kidnapped a little girl, but Richard Eikhoff was set free on bond. Tonight, he's back behind bars. Good evening, I'm Dave Heller, in for Jerry Lambert. And I'm Susan Finzen. The strange saga of Richard Eikhoff continues tonight. The Springfield attorney allegedly took a young girl without her parents' knowledge to a hotel room. After being arrested for that, he bonded out, only to be picked up again for stealing gas. He got out again. News Channel 20's Elizabeth Woolley tells us his freedom didn't last for long. Well, Susan, attorney Richard Eikhoff, as you mentioned, has been arrested again. This time, police say it's because he violated the terms of his bond. That bond was put in place after his arrest on kidnapping charges. Eikhoff allegedly took a 10-year-old girl to his motel room without her parents' permission. He posted a bond and was released. Now, anyone who is arrested can post bond if it's set by a judge, but there are rules you have to abide by. And in Eikhoff's case, he was not supposed to contact the young girl or his wife. And that's where police say Eikhoff got in trouble again. Posted over $140,000 in real property that is free and unencumbered. So by violating the conditions of his bond, which was having contact with his um, wife, he puts all that property up at risk now. Eikhoff's trial has been set for September 21st. Reporting live from the county courthouse, Elizabeth Woolley, News Channel 20. A local corporation that specializes in rebuilding Springfield's east side reaches a milestone today. News Channel 20's Matt Vanover joins us live now with that story. The Community Development Corporation specializes in rehabbing old homes on the city's east side. It's an offshoot of the Springfield Urban League, and they provide families with more than just a place to live. This is the first home Candace and Gerald Cole have owned. The couple, married for four years with three children, never thought they could own their own house. But with a little help from the Urban League's Community Development Corporation, they closed on this house today. It gives us a second chance to do the things that we talked about when we first got married. These two houses are the 23rd and 24th houses the CDC has turned over to first-time home buyers. The corporation teaches prospective buyers budgeting skills, helps clear up credit problems, and gets them ready to buy their own home. In the past three years, the Community Development Corporation has built or renovated 24 homes here on the east side. They've got two more in the works and are already looking to buy these four homes on this block. But it's not just home ownership the CDC is working towards. Shedra Johnson recently completed their job training program. She's been a member of the local painters union now for two months and plans to stay in the union for many years to come. She wanted the change for herself and her two children. And she wanted stability and benefits for her family after years of bouncing from one part-time job to another. Knowing that we have some, something stable, knowing that they don't have to worry about mom going from job to job, knowing that... You know, this is something, something's real. You can get more information on the job and the home buying programs with the Community Development Corporation by calling them at 789-0830. Reporting live in Springfield, Matt Vanover, News Channel 20. Public works crews started a sweep through Springfield today, picking up branches that were knocked down during the storm earlier this week. This will not count as one of your two annual branch pickups. This year, the city has designated four crews exclusively to picking up branches. Last year, we had to use overtime because we were picking up limbs in a three-month time frame. And we had to do a lot of Saturdays and evenings to get caught up. And now we do it through nine months, so uh, we can spread it out and we save on overtime. The citywide sweep will continue through next Friday. After that, if you need branches picked up, you can call 523-LIM. To your child's education now and the struggle to keep teenagers in the classroom. News Channel 20's Chad Mahoney joins us now with more on that story. Well, Susan, administrators say it's a growing problem at schools across central Illinois. 
Students turn 16 and they're no longer required legally to go to school. They lose interest and sometimes drop out. But people in the Taylorville School District are making every effort to keep those students interested in school. Christina Petrie is the dean of students at Taylorville High School. She also spends a lot of her time overseeing the district's student assistance program. It's designed to keep students who might be having trouble in school in the classroom. Basically, that's what we're here. We're here to get them to succeed in any way possible. And, you know, if we can't help them, then we have other resources outside of the school that we can get them help. The Taylorville School District began this student assistance program about two years ago when it noticed a sizable decrease in student enrollment. Administrators say it's for a variety of reasons, but one thing stands out. More and more students just aren't interested in going to school. 16-year-olds, yes, uh, uh, trying to keep them interested and, and uh, motivated to, to attend school and also to do well in school is an uh, ongoing problem. Taylorville Superintendent Richard Wilson says the student assistance program is staffed mostly by volunteer students and teachers who provide tutoring and other assistance to potentially troubled students. We're trying to beef it up a little bit and make it uh, stronger and more attractive to students. Um, additional tutoring uh, during the school day and also after school at the high school level. Petrie says no matter how discouraged students may become, it's her ultimate goal to make sure they graduate from high school. High school diploma is the most important thing, and then they can go anywhere from there. Now, Wilson says the district is always looking for more volunteers for the student assistance program. You can call 824 4951 if you'd like to get involved. Dave? Thanks, Chad. Well, now to another school district tackling the problem of overcrowding. Here's News Channel 20's Gary Alexander. Dave, one of the biggest margins ever seen in this state, voters in Tri-City voted 86% to throw their support behind the referendum to refurbish their nearly 70-year-old school. Soon they will be able to say and see for themselves if it was the right decision. Your hall here will turn to our right, and this is one of the entries for the new building right here. And we'll Superintendent Leslie Hohenstein says it's the dawning of a new day at Tri-City High. He says more than $1.8 million is helping move this school from one of the most backward to the cutting edge. You notice that uh, the grip surface here on the uh, ramp has a special grip tile. Hohenstein says the new wing was essentially built within a courtyard between the high school and elementary, adding six new classrooms a science lab, a multi-purpose cafeteria, and a new gym. You can see that it has the soundproofing as best it can, the cellulose sprayed in the top. It's all central air. It's top of the line. Uh, we got a lot of bang for the buck. We, uh, we put in not only the new building addition, but got some life safety work and some concerns there done. And uh, it's going to be a real jewel for the district in, in, in the years to come. Workers are busy racing against the clock to have this new wing ready for class within the month. The project's moving on schedule and is expected to be ready to go when that final bell sounds off. The energy's there, the excitement. We can't wait to get in the new building. And uh, it gives us something to see from the results of that referenda, which people did when they cast their vote, you know, for this building project. And now there's something that they'll be able to come in and see and enjoy for many, many years. So the changes mean less busing as well? Yes, Dave, in fact, they do. In fact, for years, the district has had to bus the very youngest students, those in pre-K to Iliopolis for class. With the added room, they won't have to do that anymore. A big relief for the parents out there, Dave. Thanks, Gary. Stay with us. Still ahead here tonight. Tonight, we're off to Sydney. We'll meet a Springfield man who's making his second trip to the Olympics as a spectator. The cost of heating your home is expected to skyrocket this winter, but you may be able to qualify for help paying those bills. Stay with us for information you'll need to know. The high temperature today only made it up to 70 degrees. The low so far, 50, but we are on the way down tonight with a very cool low temperature, a near record breaker. We'll have that full Storm Team 20 forecast for you coming up later in this broadcast. And now here's a look at one of the stories we're working on for our nightside report. The 2000 Olympics are officially underway in Sydney. You'll be able to see the opening ceremonies here on News Channel 20 tonight. These Olympics are being held a little later in the year than usual, putting them in direct competition with baseball playoff races and college and pro football. Tonight, see what sports fans are saying about their interest in the Sydney Olympics. 
Tonight, the Olympics begin on NBC with the opening ceremony. Saturday, the games begin. Four gold medal swimming finals featuring the men's 400 freestyle relay, an event the U.S. has never lost. The best American gymnast in two decades, Blaine Wilson, leads the men's team, and the grueling triathlon makes its Olympic debut. Sunday, the U.S. women's gymnastics team begins defense of their gold and more. The Olympics start on NBC tonight at 7.30 Eastern and Pacific. It's real. Steak and shake, may I help you? Hello? Hello? Steak and shake, famous for steak burgers. It's the final lap of Toyota's 2000 clearance. This world-class event is a winner. If you want an incredible clearance value on a new Toyota, go for it. Before time is up, go now and get incredible low 3.9% APR financing for 36 months on all new 2000 Tundras or Tacomas. Or get 750 customer cash on new 2000 Tacomas. Now at your Toyota dealer. The Persians are back. The embargo has been lifted, and at the Persian Rug Center, we are happy to again stock authentic Iranian rugs. Kum, Tabriz, Bijar, Isfahan, Saruk, Bakhtiari, Abadeh, Kilam. To celebrate this momentous occasion, we are offering incredible savings on all of our new Iranian rugs. This special sale lasts one week only. Hurry in for best selection. Now, there's only one place to go for home improvement. Yes! Saturday at 6.30 on News Channel 20. You're watching Jerry Lambert, Susan Finzen, Chief Meteorologist Gus Gordon, and Sports with Andrew Tobish. This is News Channel 20 at 6.00. A Springfield man is experiencing what he calls the trip of a lifetime. He's in Sydney, Australia, to see the 2000 Summer Olympics in person. As News Channel 20's Victoria Langley reports, this trip came out of a friendship forged four years ago in Atlanta. When we caught up with Rex Shadow earlier this month, he was packing for his Olympic vacation. As it gets closer, I'm very excited about it. Shadow is a two-time Olympic spectator. He also went to the 1996 Games in Atlanta. You see him here in the fountain at Atlanta's Olympic Park. Shadow's Olympic dreams have been coming true with the help of his sister, Alice Spear. Spear lives near Atlanta, and in 1996, she played host to an Australian family whose son was on Australia's swimming team. And when they found out Sydney was going to be hosting the next Olympics, they said, well, if you want to, you can come over to our country and stay with us while we're having the Olympics. And so we took them up on their offer. Shadow still has several souvenirs, including ticket stubs from the 1996 Olympics. This year, he has tickets to volleyball, basketball, and track and field. But deciding who to root for may be a little tricky. Well, I am a loyal American. My heart may be going also rooting for the Australians as well. He's been collecting Olympic pins to trade with other spectators in Sydney. He says the NBC pin was especially hot in 1996. But most of all, he's excited about collecting memories. My sister and I look at this as a lifetime experience you know you know, you know once i've always talks about going someplace like that you know but we're actually going to do it and she's already talked about going to greece in 2004 now let's <laughs> i said well think about that victoria langley news channel 20. this trip does not come cheap though one travel agent said a complete olympic package can run seven thousand dollars or more and another reminder, don't forget you can watch the opening ceremonies right here on News Channel 20 beginning at 6.30 tonight. That includes the Parade of Nations and the lighting of the Olympic flame. And because of the games, we have some programming notes to tell you about. Beginning tonight, our nightside report will begin after the Olympics around 11 o'clock. And Saturdays and Sundays during the Olympics, you can find all your local news right here at 5 o'clock and once again around 11. Andrew Tobish, here now. Susan, the Cardinals are on the verge of clinching the National League Central Division title, but one of the big questions is, will Mark McGuire be ready to go full-time by the playoffs? We'll hear what he has to say about it later in sports.
In Atlanta, Jackie Joyner Kersey's Olympic career nearly came to a painful end in the heptathlon, but she rallied for the long jump, and in her last attempt, soared from eighth to third. Though her final Olympic medal was colored bronze, it was one of the greatest triumphs of her memorable career. News Channel 20 proudly brings you the 2000 Summer Olympic Games starting September 15th. Get linked to some of the hottest sites on the Internet at www.wics.com. Internet service provided by FGINet. With more than a century of history, Rhodes Furniture is just getting started. 125 and still going strong. Come celebrate with a strong finance offer. No monthly payments till 2002. No interest till 2002. It's our 125th anniversary sale. If I know I'm getting good quality furniture and I can get it on sale, hello, you know, sign me up. I'm there. The anniversary sale at Rhodes Furniture. At Health Source, we know how difficult it is to lose weight and we can help using only natural research-grade supplements that contain no harmful stimulants. Stop by Health Source today for a free mini-consultation with our professional staff. We can help you manage your weight as well as your general nutrition. Health Source is the only nutritional wellness center qualified to work with your doctor to achieve optimal health. See the knowledgeable staff at Health Source, 2205 West Wabash in Springfield. He's America's judge. Hey, Judge Mills Lane. Let's get it on. Hey, look, Perry Mason. Don't <laughs> worry, my We love the judge. Next time you interrupt, you'll be El Zippo. You did? We did, Your Honor. I'm going to bounce your tail out of here. You take that to the bank. I hear you, Judge. What the hell is wrong with you sending somebody a cockroach in the mail? You tell him, Your Honor. Let's get it on. Judge Mills Lane. Weekdays at 4.30 on News Channel 20. For thousands of families across Illinois, this winter could be a budget breaker. Home heating costs are expected to nearly double. News Channel 20's Jennifer Battle is live to tell us that help is available if you act quickly. Dave, low-income families will have help staying warm this winter with the help of a state program. The increase in natural gas prices means higher heating bills, and this can be a big problem for families or individuals on fixed incomes. The state program called LIHEAP offers a heating assistance program for those who qualify. The program is on a first-come, first-served basis because of limited funds. We try and serve those most in need as they come up. Um, which are people that, again, are elderly, disabled, or have been already disconnected, especially those households with children. To compensate for higher natural gas prices, the government has increased the amount allotted for a family of four by $65. And if you want more information on the LIHEAP program, you can call the Sangamon County Department of Community Resources at the number on the bottom of your screen, 535 3120. Reporting live at the state capitol, Jennifer Battle, News Channel 20. Now, from the Storm Team 20 Weather Center, meteorologist Gus Gordon, who has the seals of approval from the American Meteorological Society and the National Weather Association. The cool air is moving into central Illinois after a cool day today. We had a high temperature of only 70 degrees. The cooler air is filtering down from Canada, and we're going to be near a record low temperature overnight tonight. We're expecting to get down to 40, the old record low for tonight, and then again for tomorrow is 39 degrees. So we're going to be very, very close to that. We could tie a record, possibly even break one. Right now at 67 with a dew point low at 37, with our relative humidity low as well at 33 percent. The wind from the northwest at 8 miles per hour and the barometric pressure is 30.12 inches. So that's pretty high. 64 degrees in Decatur, 65 the current temperature Champaign-Urbana, and a pair of 64s at Peoria and Bloomington. Satellite shot will show us not a lot going on. We had lots of beautiful sunshine today. It was really a great Friday, although a bit on the cool side at times. We do have a little cloud cover building in, but for the most part tonight, that cloud cover is not going to help us out. Temperature is going to drop because we're going to have a mainly clear sky later on this evening. Here's the bigger picture across the nation. Lots of unsettled weather along the eastern coast of the country, thanks to that cold front that passed on through our region and now is passing on through their region. Lots of unsettled weather as well from Texas all the way down to Florida. And Florence is still just rotating out in the Atlantic Ocean, although it's moving away from the U.S. mainland. Here is that cold front well down to the south of us and off the east coast of the country. High pressure is building in, and that's keeping things clear for us. And as I mentioned, a little bit on the cool side. So lows expected to be mainly in the 40s with 40 degrees, the forecast low temperature for central Illinois. And again, that record low is 39. That was set uh, 
for both today and for tomorrow's date, records for both days. Highs tomorrow, expecting to get up into the 60s and 70s, so just a little bit warmer tomorrow and then warmer still on Sunday. So here's the forecast map for tomorrow as the day progresses. We'll have uh, high pressure building in. It'll sink down to the south and east of us, pump up a little warmer air eventually. As I mentioned, we'll be looking at temperatures of about 75 degrees by Sunday, but we do expect to see some sunshine for both your Saturday and your Sunday. So if you have outdoor events, including football games tonight, be prepared for that, of course, with the cool weather. And then for the weekend, things looking great for any fall festivals that might be taking place. Here's your Storm Team 20 forecast for tonight and for the weekend. Clear sky, 40 degrees, light north wind. For tomorrow, we're looking at a mostly sunny day with a light wind and a high temperature between 70 and 75. Sunrise at 641. Tomorrow night, mostly clear. South wind 5 to 10. Sunset at 705 and 47. Your overnight low tomorrow night. For Sunday, mostly sunny with a high of 75 and that wind from the south southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So things warming up just a bit. On Monday, 78 the high temperature forecast with a partly cloudy sky. Chance of rain showers, possible thunderstorms on Tuesday with a high of 80, then back down into the lower 70s on Wednesday with a possible chance for showers early in the morning before clearing out. That's your Storm Team 20 forecast. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Gus. Stay with us straight ahead. He spent a Friday in September. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll be back with the big payoff for Don Hickman's charity golf outing right after this. Want a no-cost insurance guarantee for up to $10,000 on next year's soybean crop? Sign up for the Bottom Line Booster Guarantee. Plant conventional non-Roundup Ready beans and compare them to the Roundup Ready soybean system. If profits from your increased Roundup Ready acres aren't equal or higher than the other beans, you could receive up to $10,000. It's risk-free to switch. To get up to $10,000 protection with the Bottom Line Booster Guarantee, look for your enrollment form in the mail or at your retailer. Then mail it today. There's never been a better time to shop for the latest in home furnishings than during Leaf's Hotter Than Ever sale. Buy now and save up to 30% on a huge selection of hot new styles at low introductory prices. Like this seven-piece leather living room. At just $14.99, it's irresistible. Plus, you'll enjoy paying nothing for an entire year. Now's your chance to get the hottest styles at sizzling low prices. Leaf Furniture, where you'll always feel right at home. Nice. Nice. Use your ATM card to pay. Nice. <laughs> it's fast, it's easy, and now it's nice. Same ATM card, same convenience, new name. Nice. 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 <laughs> now this is nice. My name is John O'Hurley. My name is John O'Hurley. My name is John O'Hurley. Would the real John O'Hurley please stand up? Wait a minute, nobody's gonna buy this. I'm a woman. Yeah, like I look like an O'Hurley. Oh. Yeah. Join host John O'Hurley and celebrity sleuths Paula Poundstone and Meshach Taylor on the all-new To Tell the Truth. The truth is a funny thing. Last Friday, we told you about the Don Hickman Charity Golf Outing. This year's outing set a record for income grossing $16,335.50. Proceeds will go to research efforts to help find a cause and cure for multiple sclerosis. The Hickman Golf Outing benefits a different charity each year. In nine years, it has raised more than $100,000. Dave, we're talking high school football. It's showdown time tonight in the Central State 8 as number six Sacred Heart Griffin and fellow unbeaten Taylorville are set to get after it. And both teams know they'd better be ready for a war. Well, we just got to be mentally tough because it's, you know, we know that it's going to take four quarters and um, we got to stay tough all the way through and, and it's going to be a real battle. I mean, they want this uh, real, real bad and, and we do too. And, and it's just going to be, it's going to be, you know, people are going to have to bring their lunch pails because it's going to be there all day. It's going to be one or two plays here or there. Somebody's going to make a big play. Some kid's going to go up, whether it's our kid or their kid, and take the ball away from the other guy in the end zone or somebody's going to bat a ball away at the last second or ex uh, second effort downfield block might break break a run because you're not going to get too many opportunities against a good defense to do that. So when the opportunity presents itself, you've got to be able to deliver. And both these teams should be delivering for the fans tonight. Should be a sensational game to watch. Well, in college football, the Illini are all set to tangle with Cal tomorrow. And while a lot of people are already looking ahead to next week's Big Ten opener with number three, Michigan, the Illini aren't about to get caught playing that game. Well, as we all know, if you're a football fan, you focus on one game at a time. 
you know, you can't look past anybody playing football, you know. Any given day, anybody can win. You got to focus on one game at a time, and this week we're going to focus on Cal, and we'll focus on Michigan next week. But hey, we can still look ahead to next week's battle with Michigan, and a big question for the Wolverines going into that one will be at quarterback. Starter Drew Henson sitting out again this week with a bum foot. It's the third straight week he's been out, and while the Wolverines are hoping he'll be able to go next week when they battle the Illini, his status is definitely up in the air. Well, from the NFL, it hasn't been easy for the Rams, but they're still rolling. Last week, the Ram defense was coming up with some big plays to help the Rams stay undefeated, but they have been giving up quite a few points, and when they hit the field to battle San Francisco, the 49ers plan on coming after him. I think we need to open it up, and I, I know that that's going to be a situation that our coaching staff is working on. I think there's a, there are opportunities with our receivers to make big plays. We need to give them those opportunities, and I think part of that is opening up the playbook and stretching the field. But the Rams can stretch that field, too, and they plan on giving the Niners a heavy dose of their high-powered offense on Sunday. Well, on the Diamonds, the Cards and Cubs will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe again tonight, but about the only way we'll see Mark McGuire is if he gets a chance to pinch hit. That bum knee of his is still a problem, and he's not about to push it. Your body can only do what it can do. I'm not, I've learned since 93, 94 going through the injuries, you can't do anything about it. Your body's only going to heal when it's going to heal. I can't force it. Uh, nobody's Superman, um, and, and you have to do what you can. I mean, I had a great first half. And uh, if I can pitch in down the stretch here and get some pinch hits here, you know, that's all I can do. Be nice to see him going full time, though, in the playoffs. UIS in college soccer, excuse me, staying undefeated. They beat Benedictine College 4 to nothing. Eddie Kingston with a goal and an assist in that one for the Stars. That's it in sports. Well, stocks plunged as the price of oil continued its climb. The Dow tumbled 160 points. For the week, it's down 293. The Nasdaq sank 79. It lost 143 points this week. Tonight's market report was brought to you by A.G. Edwards & Sons in Springfield. Still cutting coupons to save even more at sales? Now you don't have to. It's Heilig Meyer's No Coupons Coupon Sale. Right now at Heilig Meyer's, take an extra 10% off all furniture, whether it's regular price, sale price, or clearance. That's right, take an extra 10% off all furniture. Save on living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, and more at low regular prices on sale or clearance. And take an extra 10% off. Plus, check out our new credit options. So don't cut coupons, just cut out to the No Coupons Coupon Sale through this weekend at Heilig Meyer's. Charity begins at home, in the closet to be precise. During Bergner's Goodwill Sale, bring in any winter clothing item, blanket, or comforter, and we'll donate them to Goodwill Industries to benefit programs in your community. For every item you bring, you'll receive a $10 certificate good toward any $50 regular or sale price purchase. Bergner's Goodwill Sale is going on now. You come out looking good, and so does someone else. Help a great cause and find some great clothes at Bergner's. Some fans of the group NSYNC are hoping to wave their way into one of the band's concerts. A local radio station put on a promotion. People gathered at the McDonald's on 6th Street imitating the big wave from the group's number one hit, Bye Bye Bye. It was a marathon session. The last five standing received pairs of tickets to NSYNC's November show in St. Louis. One contestant was on a mission for his daughters. Do you know uh, much about NSYNC? No. As a matter of fact, my daughter knows everything about them, but, but uh, I don't know a whole lot about them besides kids like them. <laughs> That's a good dab. These waivers reportedly ran out of gas at around 2 this afternoon. That means the winners waved for nearly six hours. Could you pull that off, Gus? But how, Amy? Would, how would they do on, sur on Survivor? That's the big question. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that will be a competition next there time around. Go. Uh, we have a cool night in store for us, 49, uh, 40 degrees, your overnight low temperature, so it's going to be on the chilly side. Thanks, Gus. That's our news for now, everybody. Back with more later. Good night. Today's closed captioning has been brought to you by Amaranth CIPS, leading energy provider for Central Illinois. Shaw Furniture Gallery for...